Hey guys, welcome to section 8.1 involving trig functions and right triangles. So hopefully you've uh, you just finished up your unit 7 exam and today we're just going to be taking a look at how some of these trigonometric functions relate back to the right triangles and you know maybe an applied problem involving some road grade, okay? So this should feel like review, especially given all the work that you guys have been doing with trig functions in the first place last unit. So let's dive on in, okay? And down below it says uh, the ratio of the lengths of sides in a right triangle depend only on the angle theta, okay? Which we started defining as that sort of acute angle back in uh, back in geometry, right? And only recently have we decided that that could actually be sort of any degree measure or radian value, okay? But when dealing with right triangles, when looking at the geometry, let's let's think about that in terms of a positive acute figure, okay? So if theta is an acute angle in a right triangle, well, let's think about um, sine and cosine in particular. Okay, um, as we all know, we had that really handy sort of mnemonic device, um, SOHCAHTOA, to help us remind how to set these up. Um, so we've got sine of theta is equal to the opposite leg divided by the hypotenuse, right? And we know that cosine of theta is equivalent to the adjacent leg divided by the hypotenuse. So that gives us enough here to start setting up any one of those ratios involving the hypotenuse, right? Um, and again, if we go back to the work that we had done in the unit circle, we, we know that hypotenuse was really just the radius of our circle. And that's why we were really always left with the opposite being that y, right? That y value, that increased vertical or decreased vertical. And then uh, cosine was always your x value because that is your horizontal run divided by your hypotenuse value of one, right? Okay, so let's go about setting one of these up uh, with the right triangle shown down below. It says using figure 8.4, find sine of theta and find cosine of theta. So uh, assuming this is our theta value, bottom left, we know that our opposite leg and adjacent leg would have the following positions. And of course, our hypotenuse always being across from our 90, we have really everything that we need to go about setting all this up, right? So adjacent, opposite, hypotenuse. So sine of theta, in this case, based on these values is going to be the opposite of 8 divided by the hypotenuse of, well, it doesn't look like we actually know that value yet, does it? We've got an A equals 8, we've got a B equals 15. So let's, in order to set this up properly, let's actually find that value, okay? Let's just use the Pythagorean theorem to do that, all right? So if I've got my legs, 8 squared, 15 squared, I will sum those after squaring them to create my C squared value. Okay, so 8 squared is 64, 15 squared is going to be 225, and that equals C squared. When we add these up, I believe we're getting 200, oops, 289, okay? Take the square root, and you should be left with exactly 17 units. All right, so that is going to round out our ratio here. Sine of theta is going to be equal to the opposite of 8 divided by the hypotenuse of 17, okay? Let's do the same for cosine. Cosine of theta being our adjacent divided by hypotenuse is going to be 15 divided by 17, okay? Pretty straightforward, all right? Now see if you can do the next problem on your own. This involves some of those inverse functions we were looking at uh, towards the end of unit seven. All right, so now that you're back, hopefully you, you tried these on your own. Let's try to find theta and phi here, okay? So theta is the bottom left, You'll notice from theta, we have the opposite, we have the adjacent, we have the hypotenuse. And I could really use either sine or cosine to set the, uh, you know, either ratio up, right? So sine of theta would be equal to the opposite of 3 divided by the hypotenuse of 5. Or cosine of theta also allows me to solve for theta. I could do the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, which is just 4 over 5, right? And if I just perform my inverse trig functions, it'll reverse these two and allow me to solve for theta. I should probably use an estimate symbol. I doubt these are gonna come out perfectly. So let's try that real fast. If I, first of all, make sure that your mode is in degrees, right? We're looking for these in degree values. Um, I guess it didn't say, but I certainly, when, when I think about geometry problems, that's what I default to. You guys didn't even know radians at the time. So, all right, so let's go ahead and do the inverse sine of 3 fifths. And separately, let's do the inverse cosine of 4 fifths and see what happens, okay? When I'm looking at those two values, obviously, they're the exact same. 
because all that you're doing is finding the inverse of the corresponding ratio, and therefore theta should, of course, be the exact same angle measurement. We set them up correctly. That's really what this shows you, okay? So let's go ahead and say that, that is 36.87 degrees, okay? Now, <clears throat> to find phi, I would hope that we can all agree there's a very simple way to do this uh, geometrically. We have a 90 we have a 36.87, and therefore I can add those two up and use my triangle sum theorem that tells us that three tri um, I'm sorry, three angles inside any triangle will always add up to 180. Um, and sort of a corollary to that is that your acute angles will always add up to 90, right? Because this 90 always takes up half of your 180. So you could just take 90 and subtract this, but I want to make sure that we understand how to do this when looking at a separate angle. So instead of looking at theta, Let's think about if we started off with phi here in the top right, okay? Obviously, our opposite is now 4, and our adjacent is now 3. So the orientation changed. Your hypotenuse is 5, and therefore, I could once again set up sine of phi and cosine of phi, just changing the angle. Sine would therefore be 4 over 5, and cosine is going to be 3 over 5, right? Obviously not the same ratios because we change which angle we're looking at, okay? So let's take a moment and plug these in. I'm going to perform the arc sine and the arc cosine here. So arc sine of 4 fifths, arc cosine of 3 fifths. And you're getting 53.13. Now real fast, let's just take these values and see if it works using that corollary we just mentioned. Um, I just realized I didn't put plus, so let's try that again. Okay, third time's the charm. And there we have it. So we're getting exactly 90. All right. So come on over here, and let's write out our phi value. Phi is roughly 53.13 uh, degrees. All right. So we've looked at sine. We've looked at cosine. Let's take a look at tangent now, okay? So just as with sine and cosine, we can define the tangent function in terms of side lengths, and Sokatoa tells us how to do that. We could say that tangent of an acute angle theta is equal to the opposite leg divided by the adjacent leg. All right, so that should be pretty straightforward as far as our setup goes. This asks us to find tangent of theta using figure 8.4, so not actually performing the arc tangent and finding what theta is, literally just setting up tangent of theta. So once again, I know my opposite is 8, I know my adjacent is 15, and we can ignore the hypotenuse because that value of 17 is not actually a uh, necessary side length for our tangent ratio. So it's just going to be opposite over adjacent, which is 8 over 15. Okay? Tangent of theta is equal to 8 over 15. There we have it. Obviously, you could perform the arctangent, but there's no, no reason to. We weren't asked for theta. We were asked for the trig function. All right, finally, let's apply this to a real-world application, okay? The grade of a road is calculated from its vertical rise per 100 feet. For instance, a road that rises 8 feet in every, uh, in every on 100 feet. Um, how about 8 feet in 100 feet, okay? Or 8 feet per 100 feet has a grade of 8 feet divided by 100 feet, or 8%. So that's how we would define our grade. Now let's think about this using a diagram. I think that's really helpful. Per 100 feet is talking about the horizontal change. So we could refer to this as our 100 foot uh, basis. And then if we're going to rise up 8 feet, be ever so slightly over the course of that 100 feet, then that tells us this opposite leg, right? So that, of course, allows us to relate this all to some angle measure, you know. Um, and again, it tells us our grade. That's the rise to the run, okay. Essentially, that's, that's all this is really gauging. So it says, suppose a road climbs at an angle of 6 degrees to the horizontal. So that's referring to this piece here. When measured horizontally upwards, 6 degrees is going to be our theta value, okay. What is its grade? So in this case, we don't actually know our theta value, okay? And actually the grade is really just this opposite leg divided by the adjacent leg. So I'm not even going to bother bringing that 100, uh, 100 feet in 
um, it's not actually going to be necessary when you consider the ratio we're setting up. We knew that this was opposite divided by adjacent, and so only one function should come to mind, that being tangent, right? And in this case, it told us that that horizontal grade is 6 degrees, so that's theta. So I can say tangent of 6 degrees is equal to my grade, okay? All right. So once again, make sure you're in degrees to perform this problem, and just take tangent of 6 degrees. All right. So what I'm finding here is 0 0.1051, okay? So this is roughly 0 0.1051 as our grade. Now, of course, the issue here is that's the decimal equivalent, okay? So it's not the true grade until we convert this over to a percentage. So let's just multiply by 100, and we're going to get roughly 10.51% grade, okay? There we have it. Pretty straightforward. Next up, it says the grade of a road is 5.8%. We know that that is a decimal equivalent of the ratio that we're setting up. So this is where some students would take the 5.8 and put it over 100, which while you could do that, it's really just easier to convert this to the decimal equivalent like what we just saw. Okay. Now, once again, this is, uh, this is talking about the angle when measured horizontally. Okay. And so in this case, we don't know our theta value. right? I don't know what that is but I do know this is a 5.8 to 100. So I'm gonna, going to continue using my tangent function for grade, okay? I don't know what theta is, but like we said just a moment ago, let's bring this down as a decimal equivalent of 0 0.058, okay? And now to solve for theta, all you've gotta do, again, making sure that you're staying in degrees, is take the arc tangent of 0 0.058. And so theta is roughly 3.32 degrees. Okay? All right. Hopefully this is pretty clear. Hopefully it all felt like review. None of this should have seemed new to us, but it's going to be vital that we understand these topics as we move forward in this unit, this relatively short unit with polar coordinates and our, our laws of sines and cosines. So if you guys have any questions, please ask. Feel free to email or come into AL. Good luck, guys.